Hi, it's Andrew Hill from Sydney, Australia, and today we're talking on tennis rating systems, mainly from an Australian perspective, but we're looking at one pathway for all ages, levels, and abilities on a tennis for all sort of approach. So everyone has a pathway and develops at their own levels. So uh, just a bit of a background. I've been 40 years in uh, running tennis programs. Uh, in that time, I've worked for Sydney International as a head coach. And one of the privileges was being part of the Hewitt Tennis Camp at Sydney International Tennis Centre. But in my role before that, I was doing the Tennis New South Wales development role, and of which one thing was to come up with one language for all states in Australia, uh, so that coaches could talk and players could uh, assess themselves on one system right from beginner to elite. My company at the moment is AJH Sports. So what I try and do is organise activities where I can do talent ID over many sports and then can feed them into a tennis. Uh, in that time, I've worked on some programs like Sports Stars, which is a talent identification program. Uh, once again, looking wide and then focusing particularly in the tennis market. And one of the other programs that I've written is Court Sports, where we can actually get all other coaches around Australia using their tennis centre as a multi-sport environment where they can do this talent identification all the way through. So um, the talk today, we're looking at uh, the star rating system. So this is something that we use in our own business and it's something that we're sharing to try and make tennis better right throughout Australia. So I've linked in with the Australian Academy of Tennis Coaches as their education person and stars is an acronym for Tennis Australasian Rating System. And the idea is um, there's like colors in belts and number one would be the top, number 20 would be a raw beginner. But one of the key things is one system from grassroots to elite. Now, there's many systems out there, a lot of them don't look at the beginner. And that's one of the differences that we have. Also, this is competency based. So many of the systems that work on algorithms and match play results, but a lot of them don't take into account this beginners group. So that's probably one of our point of differences. And everything that we have here is free and you can actually use it on your phone. So we'll talk about how it works. So we are focusing on tennis coaches and their business and we're trying to help them promote and develop their game. Now with this 20 point system, a lot of coaches might have a system in place, you just keep going. But if you don't have a system and you want to talk with parents and clubs, this is a one pathway that helps people going uh, from when they just pick up a racket right through to elite level, uh, like at the Leighton Hewitt Tennis Academy. Uh, it's just one pathway and you're collecting skills and we'll go through those skills that we're looking at. Uh, the grassroots is very wide down the bottom and the elite, it'd be lovely if we can keep all those players at high elite level. Um, what you'll find is sort of like a pyramid at the top. There is one spot at the top, but if we can get the best out of every person, that would be good. Uh, we do some marketing here with colour coding for all their grades and there's even a grading system that we'll look at later on so you can compare friends who want to play together but are, are different capabilities. Uh, the system was originally designed as the National Tennis Player Rating and you're looking at the capability, the potential and the reputation of a player. Uh, a lot of the time this only involved when they were doing match play but the pathway as you'll see it breaks down into mental, physical, technical and tactical attributes and it allows you to really zero in on where you are. Uh, the numbers on one side are sort of like a coaching sort of design where we can assess people. Over the other side with letters, we have A grade, B grade, a little bit more wider, and it might be something that parents might sort of follow, but real keen tennis players, you'll see there's a checklist that you can follow that can take you right from the purple area right through to red uh, where you're playing in national tournaments all around Australia and even has the capability of going international. The card system can work on your phone but in, in essence you have these little categories and we're saying that a forehand could be stronger than a backhand here 
which is stronger than a volley, and the serve. Now, these are all things that you use on a tennis court, return of serve, and these are the technical components. And what we're trying to do is get kids uh, or beginners, any age, any standard, uh, to try and say, I am here at the moment and my next step is to work on this particular thing. Now, each of these strokes are broken into individual parts so that you can actually have stronger forehand and the others are then catching up or a really good balanced player might have everything in the one area. So um, it's very hard to work out which, which place to hit to on the court, which leads us into the technical. Sometimes you could have a, a big forehand, a big serve, and the technical, they're working on things like making sure they stay at the back of the court so, say, the volleys aren't ch challenged. But um, with the play, there's tactics like hitting to someone else's backhand. So these are actual skills that you go up and down in the scale. And each of the players receives one of these. And we actually work on just these two-digit numbers like 01, 03, but it goes right through to 20. Over here we have, and this is something that is given out to parents, there's 20 components. And what you're trying to do is collect these components. And if you've got 20 out of 20, you're very well rounded and you'll probably find that uh, from a mental perspective, uh, you, you're pretty well balanced. Uh, physical, same sort of thing. You're trying to make sure that you've got all the 20 components so that when you go on court, uh, you're at your full capacity. So those are the four components through Australian Tennis Coaching. They've been working on that for a long time and to try and make a complete player or a player who's very happy with their own game. This is a more detailed approach and we'll go into this one later, but uh, this is for the coaches. And the coaches chart has the one to 20 again, but it breaks it down into different components that a player might be looking for. So most times parents will ask coaches, you know, where their kids are up to, or the child will ask, you know, where are they up to, or an adult, which is um, saying, all right, well, you're here at the moment and we need to work on these things in your lessons. Where it's really effective in our club, if a coach is sick, the other coach just comes in, works out the number, and it continues on with that particular lesson. Uh, when it gets to set play and tactics, you can find that someone could have low skills but is very tactical. So, uh, and, and you see those sort of games, and then there's other people who've got uh, very good um, skills in the strokes, but um, are still trying to get an idea of how the game works. So we do a lot of mixing games where we're getting kids working with adults, and you'll find that's a, one of the fastest ways to get the brain thinking faster. Uh, when you're playing sneaky adults on a tennis court, they might not have all the skills, but they use their tactics to cover them. And uh, that's just a very good learning uh, position to be in. Now, the serve and the return of serve are probably the first touch of the ball. And what we're trying to do is make sure that they're added in. Uh, a lot of the time, uh, the return of serve is missed out but it's so important for setting up your next shot and uh, even a nulling an attack. So um, in this particular one, the blue areas, and we'll go into this later, have hyperlinks on them, and you can touch a hyperlink, and it will go to a video that is a current area that we can sort of talk about. Now, the original National Tennis Player Ratings came out in 1994 in Australia, and part of it was to look at uh, where students were and to try and have this one language. Now, this whole system, this is called competencies. So algorithms are where a player has their scores and you say, all right, well, uh, that person won this match. It was a hard match, so they'll get uh, relative scores. One of the things I've found is that some of the players choose not to play because they might have um, a risk in playing in that they don't get any benefit they just get um, they play and if they you know, come second or or have a hard match it sometimes doesn't work out for them as well so with the comparing the tennis standards are actually quite good right across all levels of tennis so everyone is an individual some people have got high skills and low skills but it just sort of puts them into um, one arena where they're on court and they're playing someone 
uh, one of the best things is if you had a strong partner, you can play with a strong partner and actually balance out the match. So it's actually a very good uh, sort of solid challenge. And this actually leads to something later, which is what we call the handicap or a cap, uh, where you can go anywhere in Australia, say that I'm a level yellow or a seven to nine or a B grader, and that actually helps me uh, find people who would be of the same level and sort of challenge um, myself to that, that standard. So this whole area is actually more about the coaches. So the coaches use their database, and one of the best things is your data is your data. You don't share the name and the phone numbers and emails with anyone else because if anyone wants to talk to your students, they come to the coach. Uh, it's driven by the coach, and there's sort of like a, uh, a tool that will show you using Google where you can use your phone with two digits and each every person who rings you you know exactly where they are on the chart so we'll talk about that later when we have a look at uh, how it all fits together at your club when we're talking to parents we have this general sort of program here they're nearly like colored belts and the idea here in the purple one is as soon as a player picks up a racket they are straight into the game and they have a grade and they start at 20 and at that level there's a very fast uh, improvement so to try and get them into the game and get to a point which is at this 15 where they're now starting to play the game now some of the best uh, games on computers you turn the computer on you can nearly learn straight away and play the game straight away tennis is a hard sport so we need to be able to modify it so we're actually getting a grade of tennis in this lower area with modifications. So we're doing like bounce serves or giving them time, uh, five seconds to, after they've made a mistake, to go over and run over and pick up the ball and hit it back into play. So they're getting the idea of the running, the hitting, the hitting zones. And we might start with just one stroke, like a forehand, and everything works off a forehand, then we add more strokes to it. Uh, as they go through as a beginner, a good coach will get the correct grips and they'll get to a point where they're at least experiencing a proper serve action. Uh, if it's not going in, this is where your five second model can come in and sort of save the point. They run up to the net, go back to the service line, which is halfway, bounce the ball and continue play. So the idea is to get them to a point where they can play a social game with mum and dad and actually feel competent. So N15 means that they're getting 50% of serves in play and they can get the second serve. Um, it might not be too hard, but it might be going into play, and that sort of gets the, the start of the game going. With receiving, we're trying to get them to hit more through the middle of the court, the low part of the net, so that there's a, a good chance of success. Um, with the five second rule, they can sometimes run around and play their best shots, but we can actually turn that on and off and focus on feeding with the backhand if we want to try and heighten the skill. Now as they get higher and higher, you might find in the C grades they're starting to get very good around the net uh, and you'll, you'll see some other skills come in. As they get into B grade there's more power and then there's power and placement and tactics and until that one pathway together with their coach they have something to follow all the way from when they started right through to national level. And we, it complements our national system, our state system in our districts, we have the best of the districts come together, and uh, which is called inter-district, and it's a good way to challenge your skills outside your local area. So this is just a very nice system. Over here, you have general terms, but probably novice and beginner, intermediate. They sometimes tend to blend into each other, uh, and if someone asks you which grade you're in, it just helps you uh, locate where you are and uh, have a good challenge. You'll normally find if someone's in the wrong grade, uh, the scores will vary um, and we can actually use that as a testing stage to then find the correct grade. So we only need one or two matches to really find that out. Our next thing is with the coach, we were talking about your data is your data. And here I've just got an example of different coaches from around Australia 
and we have a map of Australia which is sort of locating where their tennis centre is and the statement that the kids have is my coach is and then they just pick a name Andrew Hill and under Andrew Hill is an alphabetical listing of all the players who play in my area now you'll notice the name is you can sort of read who it is but it is sort of protected and the first um, items are their grade now in this one they have things like their grade uh, what year they were born, uh, what area they live in, because you can actually break this down into district codes. Uh, and further down the bottom, you can actually break it right down into states and one system all the way through. We use a Google platform for this, so there is no cost, uh, but we have a common um, database area only where the, the coaches own the column and they put the kids' names in. So if your child or your player went to a different tournament, we just say, what's your coach's name? And then we go down the list and we can find their grade and then we put them into the correct area. So that's how the system works in a, in a basic. Uh, we're really promoting the coach and protecting the coach as an integral person uh, for the development of all these players. Now these could be schools, uh, coaches in schools, coaches at clubs, could be individual coaches. Uh, some in international coaches come in, they could still get into this system. Uh, the idea is to assist them with good educational resources so that they can actually help the student to the best of their ability. Now that student can be all ages and all levels, so um, there's something for everyone here and the idea is to have it all on one platform so that um, people could go there and check out where they're up to, um, if their friend, they might know roughly who their friend is, but it sort of gives you an idea of where, where you are and where you want to get to. One of the most important things is that everyone is welcome. So the tennis court is all different levels. Uh, we have ages, so we've got our tots, our kids, the teenagers. This is a big area that we want to try and make sure that we keep them in the game. When they get into the adults, we're looking at people like universities, uh, mums and dads and all the corporates. So it's, uh, we actually use this system at our club for all the corporates where we might have 200 people and they can play a match, they can, it shuffles them around with their skills. If they're going well, they get a harder match. If they're having trouble, they get some support. Uh, we normally have coaches on site as well because match play is important to see how the player's working. So in this case, we have uh, some stickers or we, we know the grade of the person. And if someone's having a really good day, they can actually be the same grade but um, be pushed further. And if someone's having a bad day or they are injured, we can actually reduce the cap, their rating cap, so that um, it's, it's more specific to their level on the day. But generally, we just have um, a number and you try and put many numbers of the same ability together. Now over here is an example of some of the names. So you have the first four digits of, or the first four letters of a name. Uh, then uh, if they don't have a middle name, you can put question marks in when they were born. So we can actually type in those four numbers and it comes up with uh, what year they were born. So I can actually run an 18 and under or whatever, um, any event. If someone didn't want to talk about their particular uh, age, we can also put in question marks here and it might not be specific to the tournament but if they do go into an age tournament we can actually make it relative. Like our veterans, we just have to know that uh, when they show their license we can see their age. Over here is sort of like a postcode and we can also type in a postcode which comes up with our local area. Uh, it could be a council, like my one's called Ride, so it involves many different postcodes. So when I type it in, I could say, who is the top score uh, in my particular council? It'll actually give me a, a record of who's in the ones, twos, threes, all the way through to 20. And the idea is um, the map shows them what's local, so they can actually head out to their local tennis court and practice. They can do family days. It's just a register to show where they're up to. So they could be playing socially and still developing as a player. Uh, through just general play. Sometimes general play is good because they'll take a bit more risk. 
uh, but it also gives them the chance to practice against harder matches. Now, this idea of um, the national body, there's a national system in place. The star rating actually works with the national system and would show the same sort of categories, but it talks as, uh, as, a, as a group of people. When it gets into the state or territories, uh, they also have rankings for their tournaments. Uh, what normally happens is you go into districts. Now, we've never really gone into councils because districts sort of overlap the councils, but in the postcodes, if you could go postcode by postcode, those postcodes fit into councils and the postcodes also can fit into districts. So it's, it's sort of, you can work out what you'd like to do. We've chosen councils. And then it lists uh, the players in the area. It can list the players who are under a particular coach. You could have players from outside the area coming in, but where they live, their postcode is different. So it'll actually get everyone in the local area comparing those ones. So uh, there's many options there. And the idea is uh, like the coloured belts, you're trying to always improve. And you might find they might be good in one particular area and that sort of can help them develop as a total player by looking after the other things. Sometimes when we measure them against just the score, they uh, tend to freeze or they're not enjoying it as much. This one works on competencies, which is how the education system works. So just a solid system to get someone from 20 right through to one. Uh, we can use some marketing things. So we have a rating sticker. So at the butt of the racket, it could be a tennis ball with just a number written. You could have stickers that could go on there with colors and a number in the middle. Uh, today's not about copying one particular system, but uh, sometimes kids do like getting their belts uh, they would show their racket. If it's on their racket, um, if they've got their own racket, this could lead to sales of rackets. It could lead to vibra vibration dampeners. So there's a whole lot of things that we can do to um, complement the one system, but to also work out um, what is the best way to get a game going. So if they've got good equipment, the next thing is a register where it says find your coach. So if you haven't got a coach or you're, or you're searching around, it allows you to do that. If you're getting stuck in traffic, you might be able to find a local court. And it also makes the coaches a little bit more uh, respectful of uh, where you come from, how to book in, and it's through the coach you can actually get your rating. You'll find there is a self-rating system, and we'll talk about that at the end. Uh, some of the tennis systems, they come up with their own sort of business card. We actually use stickers but anything would work. The main thing is that we're using the same sort of language. Now, if you've got any questions, you can go to AATC Tennis and talk to myself, or you can, my email's just here. But um, what I'd like to do is show you the self-assessment chart, and we'll look at that one next. Now, this is like a general directory of um, how the whole system works. So this is a one-pager. And probably the key thing is the different colours allow you to go through. If you want more information, you could then go to the document that I was showing you. But I'll show you also the very detailed document that, uh, that we uh, have on the web. So you can actually use it off your phone or at home. Uh, the one pathway, very important. And this is a big thing. You can use it for singles and doubles. Uh, you could have a strong partner with his best friend versus two other, like an A and a C grader versus two B graders. And it actually, we're trying to create a challenging game. So not a 6-0. Those things happen sometimes, but the idea is to try and get an area where you can start to um, create a good challenge, which will um, make the game a little bit more enjoyable. So I've given an example here. You could have singles. A six versus a six, there's zero caps. There's, there's no handicap points. If you had two friends or a round robin, you can actually set it up so that the grades come onto the court and you can use those as like you would use a handicap on a golf course. If it was a hard golf course or an easy golf course, the rating changes relative to the person. Uh, once again, we're complementing those four components, technical, tactical, mental, and physical. 
And these were actually introduced uh, from the Tennis Coaches Australia. So it's actually quite a solid base to uh, work any player uh, at any level all the way through. Once you go to your local coach is one way, but we mentioned there's a self-rating. And we'll have an example of how that works. It's just a, a series of questions. At the end of it, it actually says what area you're in, and it even suggests what local coach to go to. Uh, the coach is the, there's a registry, so you can actually check on your, on your players and you can check on yourself. You can also check on other coaches and sometimes players will search around a few different coaches just making sure that they're getting a complete game. Um, it, but it really comes down to the singles and doubles. So we have some new programs, one called 4x4, four four, which is each player has four serves. Uh, sort of like a double tiebreaker and quite accurate gives you a little bit of rhythm in your serve everyone gets the same amount of points uh, four by four normally takes about 10 minutes so whether or not you're playing singles and doubles just a good way to shuffle everyone around depending on their scores another way is called 21 tennis which probably takes about 20 minutes and this particular one is designed where you're playing three tiebreakers first to seven and you can actually use your handicapping points they it works in both but uh, the idea behind it is um, you're playing point by point and um, if they've got enough time they could just go into a set or normal gameplay so we have another option which is called a 12 game set which takes about 45 minutes so depending on your time there's many options there that you can um, use uh, one of the games that they talk about is fast tennis and the idea was to have something that was shorter uh, in our club we actually have match play in every lesson so we do a warm-up we have a particular stroke or theme and then finally we finish with a game and we see how that shot is used in a particular game is it match ready or should you just put it in your pocket and not use it because it's not ready for match play so that's a, just a general overview this is another form of um, how schools would work uh, so they can just have like different levels more like paragraphs of what is a description of the player but um, the main system that we use is probably the most important one now 